Hi and welcome to Systematic Listing. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so we'll begin with a situation where we are dealing with a lock. And it says that this lock requires a two-part code to unlock a letter followed by a number. And we need to list all of the possible codes for this lock. Now, the phrase systematic listing, it means that we should try to follow a nice organized process in order to find all of the different, uh, different combinations. And by systematic, what we mean is, well, if we start with the letter A, we know that that is one of our possible starting points. And so if I start with the letter A, well, the code has to be a letter and a number. And so a code could be A1. But also, if we just think about it, it could be A1, or A2 or A3 and then if A is not the starting point well the first letter could be B and B could be linked with 1 or 2 or 3 and so we are being very systematic in our uh, in our listing here because we're just going through the different possibilities in turn and so finally if we start with C well, that could be C1, it could be C2, and it could be C3. And so this is what we mean by systematic listing. You can see that all of the first ones are about A, all the rest are about B, and then the next are about C. And what is done, it is meant that we found all of the different outcomes that we could possibly have. And that is helpful when it comes to the second part of the question, because the next part of the question is about probability. Beth chooses a code at random. What is the probability that it will be correct? Well, the question here is how many of these are the correct code? Well, the key is only one of them can possibly be the correct code. And so she has a one out of however many there are chance. So one out of nine chance of selecting the correct code. So next we're going to look at a restaurant who is offering a three course meal menu and we have starters of soup or potato skins, we have mains of chicken, beef or vegetarian and we have desserts of jam sponge or ice cream. And what we want to do is we list all the possible menu combinations. Now. To do this, what we need to think about is how could we uh, do this quite quickly? Now, the first thing is we don't want to keep writing out the word soup or the word potato skins. So what we want to do is just give ourselves a little shorthand. And so in this case, I'm going to call soup S and potato skins P. I'm going to call chicken C, beef B and vegetarian V and jam sponge J and ice cream I. And so all I want to do now is I want to make a list of all of the different possible combinations of the three courses. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with a situation where I definitely chose soup as the starter. And if I chose soup, I could then choose chicken as my main. If I chose chicken, I could then choose jam sponge as my main. So I could have soup, chicken, jam sponge. But in order to do this, um, the quickest and easiest way, I can then say, well, if I kept soup and I kept chicken, what other option do I have for my dessert? Well, I could have ice cream. So S C I. Now, again, let's stick to soup as my first choice. But now instead of getting chicken, I actually get beef. And so soup with beef well, that can then have the same two choices that we've just seen before. So soup with beef with jam sponge, soup with beef with ice cream. And now we've covered all of the soup and beef combinations. But then finally, I could have gone with soup and vegetarian. And so soup and vegetarian, that would be S, V. And then vegetarian, we get the same three choices again. So we could get soup, vegetarian, jam, or we could get soup, vegetarian, and ice cream. Now, the reason why I've set it out like that is because now that has covered all of the possibilities of uh, combinations for starting with soup. I've taken soup with chicken, I've taken soup with beef, and I've taken soup with vegetarian. And so all I now need to do 
is copy this list exactly, but just replace the first letter of soup with potato skins. So P. So it's going to be potato skins, chicken, jam. Potato skins, chicken, ice cream. Potato skins, beef, jam. Potato skins, beef, ice cream. Potato skins, vegetarian, jam. And potato skins, vegetarian, ice cream. And so we have now systematically listed all of those different combinations. We're then told that Karen chooses a menu. What is the probability that it contains soup and chicken? So for this one, what we need to first find out is find where or uh, where we have soup and chicken within her menu choice. Well, we had soup, chicken, and jam sponge, and we had soup, chicken, and ice cream. All of the rest of them have some other combination. So in the next one, it's soup with beef, so that doesn't count. And at the bottom, we have um, potato skins with chicken, so they don't count. So it's only those two that we have marked. And so the probability is going to be two out of something. And it's two out of the total number of combinations. And so if we count that up, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And so the probability will be two out of twelve. If we want to simplify that, or we can half both numbers, it will be one sixth. In our last question, we have Adam, Billy and Colin who are competing in a running race. We want to list all of the possible finishing positions for the three runners. And so what we need to just think about here is, um, let's start off if we know, first of all, that Adam won the race. So Adam came first, well then Billy could come second and Colin could come third. But that is not the only combination in which Adam wins. If Adam wins, then Colin and Billy could be in opposite positions. So Colin and then Billy. And so that now covers all of the situations where Adam wins. But what if Billy wins? Well, if Billy wins, then Adam could come second and Colin third. But again, we need to also think about if Colin came second and Adam came third. They would be the situations where Billy won. And finally, for Colin winning, well, Colin could come first, Adam second, and Billy third. Or Colin could win, Billy come second, and Adam in third. Now, if we have a look, we're asked then, if all of these results are equally likely, what is the probability that Adam beats Colin? And so what we need to look at here are trying to find the positions in this grid where Adam is ahead of Colin. Well, straight away, we know that these two must be situations where Adam has beaten Colin because Adam has come first. But then there must be some more possibly within this where Adam uh, beats Colin, just does not necessarily win. And so if we look at the next line, Adam is second and Colin is third. That is another situation where Adam has beaten Colin. If we look at the next one, well, Colin is second and Adam is third. So Colin has won that one, so it doesn't count. And then, then in the last section, Colin has come first in the race and therefore he has certainly beaten Adam in those situations. And so on three of these occasions, um, Adam has won out of the total number that we've got, which if we count them up, is six. And so the probability that Adam beats Colin is actually a half. And so we end with the exam question. This one came from the Edexcel paper in November 2017 and it was foundation paper one. And we're told that there are three cards in box A and three cards in box B. There is a number on each of the cards. We can see this here in box A we have three, four and five and in box B we have nine, two and three. Ryan takes at random a card from box A and a card from box B. He adds together the numbers on the two cards to get a total score. Work out the probability that the score is an odd number. Now, this is a probability question, which means we need to know what all of the possible outcomes are. And for this one, what we can do is some systematic listing. If I take box A and box B, if I just think about how I could combine together, well, first of all, if I selected a three, 
in box A, while 3 could be matched with 9. But 3 could also be matched with 2, so 3 with 2. But 3 could also be matched with 3, and so 3, 3, 3. Now, if we go again, I could have selected 4 in the first box, and then that could also have been matched with 9. 4 could also have been matched with 2, and it could also be matched with 3. And then, finally, I could have selected 5 as my first value, and again, 5 could have been paired with 9, 5 could have been paired with 2, and 5 could have been paired with 3. And so all we now need to know is what were the totals, because that's what it said, he adds the two numbers together. And so in all of these different outcomes, I have 3 plus 9, so that's 12, 3 plus 2, which is 5, 3 plus 3, which is 6, 4 plus 9, which is 13, 4 plus 2, which is 6, 4 plus 3 is 7, 5 plus 9, 14, 5 plus 2, 7, and 5 plus 3. Eight. And the question was, what is the probability the total is an odd number? And so what we need to do, we need to identify the odds. So that would be 5 and 13 and 7 and 7. So there are four of them. And the question is, how many different outcomes could I get? Well, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We had nine different combinations. And therefore, the probability would be four ninths.